nothing to clock. Super 16 is the cream of the crop. College football time of year don't stop. We're well, adding this guy. Just another go down with the courage. Hard skill and will. Bringing you the best 16. Serving up a place for the football teams. Breaking the best 16 college teams. Football fans, it's the show where you dream. Ain't no bias. Chris Zorich making truth traded in the golden helmet in the past for a suit. With the tape, never lies. College ball, he's a stoop. Breaking the top 16, not the top 32. I don't mean to cut you off like a Zorvis jersey, but you ain't really grinding unless the jersey dirty. Hit the running back like a Mack truck behind the 30 yard line. It's game time. I see Roddy off the side. You look line. at Chris like this with a fact checklist. Going over college teams like a busy scientist. Steve streaking from his head like in his playing days. Super 16 poles on the show straight away. It's the FBS, the best of the best from the ACC to the SEC. Pac 12, Big 10, Mount West, Sun Belt, and the Big 12. Open your eyelids. Who the best like the clock. Super 16 is the cream of the crop. College football time of year don't stop. With Christopher Zurich, just another go down with the courage. Heart, skill, and will. Bringing you the best 16. Serving up a plate for the football fiends. Breaking the best 16 college teams. Football fans, it's the show where you dreams. Welcome, everyone, to week four of the Super 16 Poll Show with me, Chris Zorch. What an exciting, exciting weekend of football, college football, and a precursor to what I'm going to talk about later, an amazing game by the Irish, finally. Um, there are some, obviously, some other good games out there, but we're, we're, we're going to spend a little segment on the Irish, and I know Phil has a couple seconds to talk about his beloved Bears and how they did this week or didn't do this weekend. Oh, right out the gate, I guess. I, That's you know how, what? I, I just wanted to kind of throw you in the fire. Yeah, you, you're you the peel the Band-Aid right off, <laughs> right? Yeah. Listen, I've never been more uh, fired up and embarrassed at the same time. I think the embarrassment – of, you know, you hire someone to come in and run an offense and, and have the uh, branding, if you will, guru and coming from this. And it's just continues to get worse and worse. And no matter what quarterback, what talent, what whatever, we're still looking for the whys. And <laughs> that corporate BS that he continues to spew has got Bears fans fired up around the world. It is, Eddie. It is shameful. And it's disgraceful, to be perfectly honest. You know, there's been, you played for a few coaches, so you've experienced, obviously, this on the inside. But for us fans that watch as the Chicago Bears – you know, paddle their way across the Pacific Ocean where everybody else has yachts. It's like, it's, listen, I'm, I just watch other NFL teams and I'm like, how could they get it? And we can't understand. Let's help our tackles out, Chris. Like, oh my God, please. I mean, how, how many tight ends do we have? Like 40 or 35? Yes, exactly. Or my team? There's, there's five tight ends and I believe there's one on the prag. It's like, chip just ch give them help and a, a little bit a little bit i little really bit. feel like there's no way in as i was talking to my dad there's just no way like anybody with half a brain would do that to a young quarterback if it wasn't purposefully let's throw them to the wolves or let's be right it's it's unbelievable, Chris. It was an unfortunate day because the excitement it really took the wind out of the sails. Sure. His first start, all the, absolutely. Exactly. It's like that that shouldn't go down. And you saw me on BHL uh yesterday. Bears Hour Live. Bears Hour Live on our channel. Over 13,000, almost 14,000 views, just two thousand people rocking and rolling. Everybody's fired up, Chris. And I, I appreciate your love and support for what we do here. And really, you know, I'm keeping it a hundred with you. 
turning the page and talking some college football with you with obviously the giant elephant in the room being those Chicago Bears. <laughs> and really, I really believe a college team could have beaten them on that day, the way Coach was Nagy bad. approached it. was. I've never was felt – it mean, was back to – remember Terry Shea? Nine sacks. Nine sacks. Nine sacks. Nine sacks. Nine sacks. Remember Terry Shea, the coach, the offensive <laughs> yeah, coordinator? Yeah, yeah. Like he came in here with Jonathan Quinn. It was that bad. It was that bad. What's the common denominator, Chris? And then we'll kick this show off. No matter what quarterback we have, whether it be Justin <laughs> Fields, Mike Glennon, remember Mike Giraffe Glennon? All of these guys all fail. And Mitch Trubisky – took the fall for this guy many a time when I was telling, I was the only one, Chris, saying, listen, this is a Matt Nagy issue. It ain't a Harry he stand issue. Mm. It ain't Harry's being the scapegoat. Juan Castillo, is he coaching them wrong or is Matt Nagy saying, no, I want this block like this? I'm just saying, Chris. I'm just saying. <laughs> As a football coach, Watching tape for my entire life, they aren't being coached well, and it showed on Sunday. Exposed, it, it, it absolutely got exposed. It absolutely got exposed. And you know, as a former player, you watch, and not 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 only do you cringe, but being kind of homegrown Chicago kid, you know, it's just it's very frustrating because you know he had a great first year. Uh, that's when I think he got the tag as being a, a great guru, offensive guru. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he was the uh, um, coach, coach of the year. He was. Exactly. They should and have given it to Vic Fangio. Then all, <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, each year it, it, it's getting worse and worse, and we're, we're seeing what's happening now, which is just unfortunate. But I wanted to give you your five-minute rant on the Super 16 <laughs> poll show. The Super 16 poll show. With Chris Love Zorich every Monday night here, 8 30. I'm excited, Chris, because you know what? The Bears, you were my my if I was on the Titanic, you were that freaking floaty, whatever, <laughs> dinghy out there. I'm a floaty dinghy, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank hey, you, Joe. I appreciate that. You know what I'm talking about? The little what is that thing called? A uh, life preserver? No, the circle thing they throw out. The life some, preserver? It's called a life preserver. I always it's thought that was the jacket. Oh, the life okay, preserver. okay. So whatever. What, yes, the, the ring you of were life? my we you were my life? life preserver. Thank you. Okay, all right. <laughs> because I knew at least I had Chris Zorich breaking down college football, which was another awesome weekend of college football. Yes, it, it was. Never, we had some some interesting upsets. We, we had, had some some, upsets. Uh, some 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 great games too. So. Let's yes, I'm excited. Looking at, can we look at last week's? Oh, of poll? course. I like how you direct this ship. Hey, you're, man. Unlike Matt Nagy, you're prepared. I you. Wow. <laughs> 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 all right. I'm, I'm not going to read through all of them, uh, go through all of them, but as you know, there were some really exciting games. We had Notre Dame, we had Arkansas. Uh, Cincinnati, interestingly enough, did not play this week. Uh, we mm -hmm. had an interesting game between Texas A&M and Arkansas. That was fun. And kind of looking over, it's going to be an interesting uh, week four, but that was week three of the poll. So we're going to get on with yes, this sir. week's poll at number 16. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Number what? 16, Joe Monte. Oh, no. Number 16, North Carolina State. Now, we are definitely, definitely excited about this one. Um, it was interesting because they had a chance to play one of the – what 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 was one of the best teams in the country. But a little more importantly for the players, you know, this is a game that they're never, ever going to forget. They had a chance to knock down a highly ranked Clemson team, take them to two overtimes, and if anybody had a chance to see the game, um, the they actually had – Clemson actually had a chance to win it 
Um, but our guy, I'm just calling him DJ because I messed it up the last show. Uh, DJ U- Phil, DJ Uglia. DJ? You always ask me, bro. Just keep him as DJ. DJ. All right. Well, DJ I'm gonna, keeps I'm gonna, letting I'm us do down. His Chris. name is just some justice. But it, yeah, it's, well, it's really, it's, well, I'll talk about him when we get to Clemson. Yeah, okay. If if, if we get to Clemson. But, um, and, and I'm sure a lot of people don't have North Carolina State in their poll, but my philosophy is if you have a chance to beat one of the best teams in the country, you needed to be rewarded for that. Now, it could be a pat on the back or it could be an opportunity to be in the Super 16 poll, which – I did. So I have North Carolina State at 16, which I know a lot of folks don't. But the interesting thing, though, as I I said before, these guys are going to remember this game for the rest of their lives. Have a chance to take a top-ranked Clemson team to double overtime when you're not even ranked. An amazing, amazing season. So, I mean, that literally is probably going to make NC State season. But they do have Louisiana Tech up next, which will be interesting to kind of see. One small tidbit I did find out, this is their first time they beat a top-ranked team since 2012. So that's pretty good. So let's go on to number 15. Number 15, Michigan State University. Now it's going to be interesting because I got a little flack for, for not having enough Big Ten teams, but sorry about that. Um, I do like Michigan State. Um, so folks are talking about Michigan. Um, actually, Phil, is there a way you can, you could take a look at the teams that Michigan has already played? Because I know that they they beat an okay Washington team, but I think the rest were like really not scrubs, but they weren't that great of teams. So the idea of putting a team like Michigan in, who again. Right. I mean, I think that Harbaugh is a great coach, but can you read off? Yes, Western. They beat Western Michigan to open the season. There we go. Forty-seven, fourteen. Then okay. they played Washington, thirty-one, uh, ten. Then Northern Illinois, they beat sixty-three to ten, and then Rutgers, they squeak out a victory See? at twenty to thirteen on Saturday. So now you say, well, Chris, you have Michigan State in there. And hi, Phil. You have awesome. – <laughs> <you have, laughs> I haven't seen you. I haven't seen <laughs> your beautiful face this morning so, or, or this, this, this whole day. Um, you have Michigan State who actually played really well and beat a ranked Miami team. So that's the reason why Michigan State's in here and Michigan is not. Again, this is – the Super 16 poll show with Chris Zorch, not Joe Smith. So that's the reason why Michigan is not in my yes. top 16. But it was interesting enough. And again, I'm not super excited because Michigan State should have rolled over Nebraska and they didn't. They beat him in overtime, interception that led to a field goal. So that you know that that's something that that we have to consider now. They're going to have a chance to redeem themselves playing Western Kentucky, which, uh, again, should be an opportunity for them to get better, play play folks who are not starters, get some, get some guys some experience, but more importantly, kind of prepare as they go into the, the Big Ten season. So let's take a look at number 14. Number 14, Clemson. comes Clemson. Okay, what the hell happened? I mean, this is offensive line breakdown. This is everything. This is our guy DJ, who I thought was going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the country this year, which has not happened. He only had 111 yards, I guess. This is this is a loss to a team that's not ranked. Um, and it's so hard for me because in order to be the Alabamas, in order to be the Georgias, in order to be the top-ranked teams, I mean, you're supposed to put a whipping on 
teams like this, even though they are conference points, even though they are challenging opponents, you have to find a way to beat them because <clears throat> they're your conference opponents. But more importantly, you need to rack up some wins considering the situation you're in. So I have them at 14. It's kind of low, but they dropped four spots. So they may have a chance to redeem themselves against Boston College, which I think will be an interesting game considering I think last year when Trevor Lawrence was out, actually Boston College gave them a run for their money. So it'll be a really interesting game, and I'm not going to chalk that up to win for Clemson just yet. So let's take a look at – Wait Number a second yes, here. Sir. Yes, sir. Two losses. Yes. And you still have them in your top 16. Yes. Okay. Because they started, I yes. had them at three. Yes. Three. So yes, but as they, they lose, struggled, they've looked off. As they lose, they're, okay. they're coming down. Now, their first <laughs> loss, I think they dropped, they dropped like five or six or something like that. So I mean, mm -hmm. this is I'm 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 kind of balancing who else is in there. Um, do I think they're do I still think they're a good team? Yes, I do. Yeah. But that's what, when they're on all cylinders. So it's going to be kind of interesting. Um, Sheree funny, is shocked funny. too. She's yeah. shocked too. Let me <laughs> look up Clemson. You know Clemson's next opponent here. Yes, it's Boston College. Are you you see, huge show? win, huge win. I don't know, man. I don't know. No, that was you a remember huge. Boston College last I'm year. Bo BC's win this past weekend. Oh, I'm huge. sorry. Yes, yes. Because they did. You see the yes. Missouri coach and him going talking yes, smack that was back. Funny. And, yeah, that yeah. was great. That's what I like, Chris. <laughs> That's see? what I want from my coaches. See now, I don't want to know nice. the whys, Chris. I want to see the wow. score. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. All right. So let's, I think Phil's going to have a vote for BC, but let's see what happens next week. I think, and again, they may have a chance to get in if they dominate against Clemson, but I don't think it's going to happen. But again, I think it's going to be interesting because you have what they established last year. And I think that gave them the confidence kind of going into this year saying, you know, we almost beat them. There's no reason why we can't do that this year. And I think that it may happen. I don't have that on my top top games yet, but it may inch up there. So are we ready to take a look at 13? Number 13, BYU. I am pumped about this BYU team, but... They need to dominate. They only beat USF by one touchdown. Now, I was all jacked up. They're throwing some points up. They had a chance to beat some ranked teams. That's great. But all of a sudden, they need to blow these teams out. And, and, and when you look at teams that are higher and see what their scores are versus kind of marginal teams, maybe, I mean, not ranked teams, I mean, you have them double digits. I mean, it's insane. So the fact that um, BYU only beat USF by one touchdown, has some concerns, but I think it'll be interesting because they have a history of having some great quarterbacks. And I, and I think that what we saw last year with um, Zach, what was it, Zach Wilson? Zach Tom? Zach Wilson. Yes, Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson. First okay. round pick, Jets, struggling yes. there. It's, it's, it's going to be interesting. So I am amazed, though, their quarterback, Jared Hall, wound up getting over 560 yards. Again, that should equate to a whole mass of touchdowns. Again, when you're playing talent that is not at the same level as you are, I mean, you have to show that. And, and, and I'm tired of people saying, well, people play down their competition. They can't be up for every game. Well, there's some teams out there, there's some coaches out there that are able to get them pumped up and get them excited for every game. So that theory, I'm kind of throwing out the window because that, that really is not true. All right, let's take a look at number 12. You said 500 yes, something yards? Yes. The Bears had 47 yards wow. this weekend. Thank I just you. wanted you to know that. that. <laughs> oh, 47, okay. So BYU's quarterback had... 
513 more yards than the Bears whole offense did. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Number 12. Number 12. Texas A&M. Whew. I, that is, I mean, this is another team I thought I had them ranked high as high as six, I believe. I thought they were going to do something. Uh, they wound up dropping five spots to number 12 because they played an amazing, over-emotional, excited Arkansas team. Now, this game was great. There was a lot of hype before. Um, wound up having the chance to learn a lot about their um, uh, Arkansas's coach. And it was interesting because folks thought this was going to be a gimme. I mean, a, a lot of people didn't have Arkansas ranked. I did. Uh, I thought they were a good team. I thought this was, this was one of our top five matchups. I thought it was going to be a good game, and it was. Um, really surprised that it turned out the way it did. But, I mean, this is a, talking about a team in Arkansas that folks didn't realize how good they were. And I think they're surprised as well as they kind of come in into the season, come into their own. When we get to Arkansas, which obviously is a lot higher than Texas A&M, I'll talk a little bit more about them because I think it's a really a special team. It's going to be an exciting team to look at. Let's take a look at number 11. Number 11. Notre Dame. Oh, my Lord, Phil, you, you, you're going to have to jump in here with me. Um, I was at this game. Yes. And it was it was hard to watch, man. It was hard to watch. The first half, I wanted to vomit. I mean, I just felt like, I mean, our offense, our, our defense finally showed up, mm-hmm. finally had a chance to go out there and prove themselves. Eventually, they wound up getting two pick sixes, yep. which is freaking amazing. I mean, well, I would love to see what the last time that happened. But more importantly, and what terrifies me now is that the running game only had three yards. I know you were – I thought it was a great game because I felt like the momentum was swinging to Wisconsin and – Let's be honest, Chris. I, I, you know, I texted you. Uh, we talked for a little bit, but I know you're a busy celebrity out there, so I don't want to <laughs> step on your, wow. your toes. But, was that a yeah. tailgate? Having some fun. <laughs> dude's calling me. Right, I'm making some brats. I'm like, dude, come on, man. It's not fair. It's not fair. But in all seriousness, they're playing jump around. I haven't seen Soldier Field like that maybe since. You know, Greg Olson caught that pass from uh, Cutler in the playoffs or Thomas Jones scored against the Saints. I think the crowd was fired up like that. Wisconsin brought that thunder and I felt like it was like a more Wisconsin fans there than there was Notre Dame fans there. And I felt like clearly I going into the game thought Wisconsin was going to give them a run because I thought Wisconsin's defense has some really solid football players mm-hmm. on it. And let's face it, when Cone got hurt, I was going to be I was concerned. So I felt like they battled through adversity. They had the kickoff return for a touchdown too. Again, they won every area obviously except the run game. To your well, point. Which- which makes me nervous now because if you start taking away two pick sixes, if you start taking away the punt return, <clears throat> now how many scores? How many scores did the offense have? Okay, so right. so now it's an actual game, right? Now it's a competitive game, and although I'm hard on my Irish, I mean, and I'm being honest about this because I mean they only moved up one spot for me. Right, because how the hell are you going to win any games with a total of three yards rushing? I don't care if there's a 500 yards passing; you can't win a game with with three yards rushing. You just can't. And you're right. As fired up as excited as you are about what's going on with the Bears, that's how I feel about Notre Dame. I know. I can see it. Well, I mean, I mean, this is. 
a, a premier program. This, this, this should be up there when we talk about great programs. This needs to be up there with the Alabamas and the Georgias and the Clemsons from years past, right? Right. But we're kind of stuck in this rut of like literally just winning games. Like literally it's the luck of the Irish. I mean, and I was talking to some folks who may, be a, may have been inebriated out, out in the parking lot, <laughs> hanging out, having a couple beers. Yeah. But I mean, you hear, you heard every possible scenario for us to have success. But let's play a complete game. I mean, I love Marcus Freeman to death, but his first couple of games were horrid. So let's get an offensive line that, that can gel. Because right now, I think they're on their 15th offensive tackle. I mean, this, this is crazy. And not taking anything away from these kids. I mean, this is coaching, right? They should have right. known that the majority of their offensive linemen were going to be leaving. So, and as I said before, and I know people think I'm crazy, but I always harp on this. The reason why you put points on the board – a lot of points on the board, so you can get your young players in there because you cannot make up game experience in practice. You cannot make up game experience in the meeting rooms. You have to go out there and play. And when you have a chance to have a good team where you're throwing up numbers, that's the reason why other schools, Alabama, Georgia, are so good because their second team players, their third team players, have either the same amount of minutes as the starters or maybe, you know, 40% less. That's crazy. I mean, you want that experience as a student athlete and your coach needs to make sure that that happens. Well, their left tackle, they've rotated a lot of guys in there. So you got to, they're not cohesive there. The quarterback goes out, and Marcus Freeman's defense, to your point, you know, they came up. So someone, they stepped up, got you two tutties, and you score on special teams. You should never lose that game, ever. If you score two defensive touchdowns and a kick return touchdown, you can't lose. But, right? but again, take those away. Right, I mean, right. Th- you're that's concerned. Like gonna every but how day. much is the is it because of the cone getting hurt? I know this kid came in and gave him a spark, which is fine. The, w- which, which is fine. But I've I've really liked what Cone has done. I'm a huge Cone fan, and, and what I don't like is when they put the second team guy in there, uh, a butcher, I think Tyler, and yeah. it's hard. I mean, you don't take Joe Montana out. You don't take. Right. Um, I mean, Nick isn't taking uh, what's his face, um, uh, Bryce Johnson or no uh, Bryce. Bryce? I forgot his last name. Um, he's not taking Bryce out. So yeah. the, the idea of kind of changing up and well, we may need a little spark, right? It's bullshit. I mean, come on, man. You know, I, I mean, let's let's go out and play these guys. You can see I'm fired up about my 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 nerd name Irish. So that's why they're at eleven. Um, some folks have them higher. I'm not sold yet. Um, and I think this is so funny, Phil, because I know you were talking about before that folks thought I was going to be kind of a homer on the on the right. Golden Dome, but I'm just the exact opposite. So I, I think we need to we, we need to shape up and, and, and do well. Yeah, I, I think I've said this many times before, just if you're a new listener here on the Super 16 Poll Show with Chris Zorich, Chris is not playing a biased game. Like he takes this very seriously and he double checks his, his list and his notes. This guy's got more notes than Santa Claus for God's sake. It's a law school, man. That's what happened. Man. <laughs> so I'm just keeping it a hundred with you. This guy follows the, what we call the uh, prerequisite here at the tape. Never lie. The truth. He goes with his truth and Notre Dame at number 11, Chris. I, I'm giving, I would break his chops. I'll tell you that like this. Let's go Notre Dame and Cubs fans. Let's do this for our man, Harry Carey. Let's go. A one, a two, a three. Take me out to the ball. Take me out to the ground. Give me some peanuts and 
There. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Let me ask you. Thank you. You went way down into Barry White land for a second. <laughs> that was my Harry Carey, man. I was trying to. I was trying to That's summon my Harry Carey. That's what you were doing. You were going into to. a. You should have just did Zorich. You should have talked to me about this beforehand. Oh, okay. I advised All right. you. Okay. All right. Because you Coach. went way into it. a note. You got trapped. You're like, hey, <laughs> like what? Well, this? first of all, I don't see. <laughs> but I think you could have done it better with just doing you. I thought oh, okay. that took I away from my boy. I, I was channeling Harry Carey. So okay. Well, that was my Harry. That was my my Harry Carey. Done by still laughing, so I just wow. I love you, and that's not you know made up, not blowing smoke. I'm just saying, well, I wish you would have talked to me because I feel like that I, I was additional. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. See, I do. The and next I, Santa Claus. I want you to be Chris Zorich, don't imitate anybody. Well, just I was trying to do Will Farrell doing Harry Carey. Jesus Christ, See? now you're imitating it got, it got all, people. It got all complicated, man. It got all complicated. <laughs> you, did you have your notes there, too? It got, well, here's the thing, man. So this, oh, is, this is no joke. Okay. There was an event before that I was emceeing. Oh, no. Did you have a couple shots or something? No, I had nothing, right? It was, oh, okay. It was an event. So that event ran over a little late. And it took me... Now, from where I was oh, at, traffic. we were at the water tower place. Traffic. Oh, Jesus. We were running. The, the Cubs people were like, is he going to make it? And the Dorian folks said, yeah, yeah, he's fine. He's fine. And then I was, dude, I was running down the street, dude. So really? what you saw, man. You were tired. Dude. I How was, quick did you get that jersey crazy. on? That it was crazy. Man. It Authentic was crazy. jersey. It was crazy. I'm so glad that's it. Well, I, was so, I was so nervous. Man. I'm just joking with you. I... You did a tremendous. That's got to be hard. You know why the acoustics too messes you up because you it, it, hearing I, yourself come back. I'm not it's a singer. Very hard. I, I'm, 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 I'm fine with. I'm not it. saying I'm, I'm you were okay. I was. Are you kidding me? Hey, look, man. It's, it's like if you know you suck at something and you yeah. do it just to make people have fun and laugh. That's what not? I love about you. Man. Now, there now, is. if I was, if I sang, yes, for a living. Like Pavarotti. And, and <laughs> they're like, wow, you really pulled that out of there. Okay. I love, I love you. So that was awesome. If that, if that was if I sang for a living yes. and I did that bad, then I need to be fired. I or, or people don't so, buy my album. That's why Bears fans want Nagy fired. There's the best. If Chris was I a singer, that in there. That, that's amazing. That's it. That's that how amazing. I do it. You're the best. I love we it. We had a lot of I, I I had a lot of fun. I was trying to think when am I gonna play this? And that was the perfect time. You're, so I could literally say sport. that I've been embarrassed on national television. So probably really can't be embarrassed. Exactly. Anymore. So that's 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 cool. That's cool. So so thank you. So now now our viewers and our listeners will know how horrible. I sound singing the seventh inning stretch. But you also have the escape clause of that this? you were imitating <laughs> Harry Carey. No, no, via... imitating <laughs> Will Ferrell doing Will Harry Ferrell Carey. doing it, it, Harry it, it Carey. It got yeah, complex, man. So it got you, complex. That's it. So at the end of the Super 16, I've asked a friend of mine to put together the top 16 worst singers when it came to the seventh inning stretch with the cubs oh, but i'm still waiting for that. So I I might be next it. week i Thank hope you, you don't you. make it either that'll Thank be on next I, week's I show a little teaser in the business wow there you wow. go i will remove myself now oh, oh hit no, the wrong I, button I like again like that's okay now, now you're all frazzled that's great <laughs> all right phil i don't know if you remember but we we're on number 10 number 10 Arkansas. Now, this is a game I was excited about because you had, although there probably aren't a lot of underdogs in the SEC, you had this underdog kind of bottom of the, of the conference team. I love the story. Offensive line coach for years, absolutely for years, been in the ACC forever, 
Who's that? Georgia. Um, just, just a really great guy. I'm talking about Sam Pittman. And really, he kind of gave up the idea that he was going to be ever be a head coach because not very many offensive line coaches become head coaches. And it was so interesting because they wound up doing a piece, and I forgot what, what channel was on, but it was great kind of learning kind of how he got to his position. But more importantly, his players, when they talked about him, you knew that they enjoyed playing for him. And you knew he was one of those individuals, those great coaches, that our players coach because he cares, he listens. And it was great because seeing not just offensive linemen, but you saw DBs, you saw linebackers, you saw guys who may not even be in that offensive line room um, or – kind of be on that offensive side of the ball talking about how great of a coach he was. So it's exciting to see young kids who get pumped up like that, who who still want to play for a great coach. And just hearing your story, I thought was just really, really remarkable. And I I think it's going to be really cool to kind of see how far they go. Now, that was the good part about it. The bad part about it. Oh, I'm sorry. And they beat a number seven ranked, or no, number, uh, yeah, they're, they're, uh, Texas a and number seven, which is great. The problem now is that they're going to play at number two Georgia. And I think the party might be over, but I think it's going to be a competitive game. And it'll give them a chance to kind of see where, they're, where they stand against like top five, Top five team, which I think is great for for any team, especially when it's it's competitive. But when you have a chance to look, I mean, <clears throat> they're in the SEC West, so they're going to see this competition, this kind of competition, week in and week out. So this is going to make them them better. But right now, being four and zero, having a chance to to be the seventh ranked Texas a- Texas A and M team is great for them. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, that, that's actually, if I give you a little preview, that's actually really one of my top five matchups um, for this year. So, uh, Georgia's, George QB is a real deal. He can bought, which one are you talking about, um, JT Daniels, or because they've been trying to do like a little switcheroo thing that, that Notre Dame's doing for a little bit there? Um, he, TJ Daniels was not injured. So um, the second team quarterback went in and wound up doing very, very well. So I don't think they're trying to cause uh, um, a, a quarterback controversy, but it was kind of interesting. Now we go to number nine. Number nine, Florida. Now, Dan Mullen's Florida team moved up two to number nine. They beat an average, okay, Tennessee team, uh, 38-14. Um, it's hard because when you look at the teams who are in the SEC, even the Tennessee has the ability to, to kind of do well when they have the chance. And that's why Arkansas's kind of season already is just so remarkable because no one had them either ranked. They, they weren't even on the radar. And then all of a sudden they're they're starting to play well and beat some teams. Um, this is going to be an interesting uh, journey for for Florida now because they don't play any really tough competition. Um, they're in the other division until they get to Georgia. So I think it's going to be kind of interesting to kind of see where um, they they fall, even though they're at. They're at number nine right now. So, uh, Rock Irish, why aren't you a Mullen fan? It'll be interesting to hear. hear. So, <clears throat> being said, their next competition, their next game is going to be against Kentucky. Again, a game they should win, give them that practice, have a chance to go out and, and get better. But, again, in, in a couple of weeks, they have teams that they have to play like Georgia. So, let's go to our number eight team. Number a Ohio State. Now they moved up one spot to number eight and destroyed Akron. 
Um, you guys know my philosophy. I don't necessarily move teams up <clears throat> for opponents they're supposed to beat. But with the configuration of the top seven teams, and it was really interesting because I was debating going back and forth on should I allow a number seven Cincinnati who didn't play, should, should they be ranked higher than Ohio State? But it's interesting because the, the, the teams that Ohio State played – versus the teams that Cincinnati played weren't necessarily equal, but we, we saw that Ohio State has that loss against Oregon, and that wound up moving them down. And just because <clears throat> I didn't feel comfortable putting a Cincinnati um, underneath um, a team like Ohio State. Now, the question is, Chris, if – they or actually, I could ask Phil this. Phil, how do you feel if you had a Ohio State playing a Cincinnati, and who's going to win that game? I mean, that's that's a big rival. Ohio State, they look like they struggle a little bit at quarterback, so the run game has had to carry them. They have a good defense. Cincinnati always has some explosive playmakers on offense built around that kind of speed so that's that's a tough call there you know See, and it's hard for me because i'm not a hundred percent sold on cincinnati right and, and I, I think, I, either and, am i and it was interesting because i'm I more know sold last on week, arkansas than cincinnati right right right, right. well i love that story by the way it, it was great i mean really really cool but here's yeah. the thing when you look at kind of who – I'm sorry. When Ohio State is playing these teams and who they're playing, it's hard because can they beat Cincinnati? I think they can. But Cincinnati find themselves in a way that they're winning. I mean, last year they were – Part of the group of five, and they made it into the top ten. I think they're like seven or eight last year, or maybe even higher. Right. So then we've seen Ohio State do terrible against teams this year. So yeah, that's it's the, one that's of those any thing. given Sundays where, or excuse me, um, any given Saturday in this case, where you know the, there's a strong possibility that Cincinnati can beat Ohio State. And it's just I like I know if I was to choose, mm -hmm. like say you're like Phil, you gotta choose. I would choose Cincinnati based really? on what I see them playing. Yeah, I think okay. their their offense is explosive, and and Ohio State is struggling offensively. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I feel like even with you know with the distractions, you're seeing player you the kid walked off the field. Did you see that? Right. Yeah. In the middle of the game, then you have mm -hmm. the other kid transferring. So that kind of also, I think, creeps into the equation here, like sure. these distractions. So for me, I think I would, I think this is Cincinnati. Obviously, Cincinnati versus Notre Dame is like that's their Super Bowl there. So I would choose Cincinnati over Ohio State. If I was well, betting on the weekend, that's what I would bet. <laughs> And I think that Cincinnati has played this perfectly. They got a buy yep. before they're playing Notre Dame. And I kind of want to talk about that a little bit because, well, you know what? Okay, let's just move on to number seven because that's what we're going to be talking about. Number seven, Cincinnati. Hey, we're, we're back talking about number, six, number seven, Cincinnati. Here they um, are. <laughs> so, I mean, give me – I mean, I'm really not hyped, excited about bye weekends. I mean, yeah. are they needed? Yes, I, I think they are. But everybody assumes that when you have that 
week of rest, and we all know it's not a week of rest. I mean, you, you, you're actually going out there and maybe even practicing harder. But supposedly it'll, it'll give your, your your body time to rest. So right. I like the idea of playing opponents. Now, maybe you could take a, a page out of what, like, really uh, – for, for forgot who they are, but a lot of the coaches will – will schedule weaker teams so you have a full week of practice, you have your meetings, your joy, every, everything is going according to plan, but it's a weak opponent. So now your starters may only be playing a quarter or a half. Right, but they still stay focused. Exactly, exactly. I so agree I gonna, with you. I was kind of curious I, on how you felt about like, yeah, the Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the bye. Mm-hmm. I think it breaks up the – the rigidness that you really want, the focus there, especially with young athletes and dorms and girls, that stuff can become a distraction no sure. matter what anybody tries to tell you. So for me, I'm with you. I like, I want, I would, strate- if I was the head coach, I would strategically put Akron, Yukon, whoever the hell mm-hmm. on that schedule during that week, right. you know, just let's keep it let's keep right. us focused and and do the old Lou Holtz find something in there that they can <laughs> right. build off you know what I'm right. saying these guys could beat us on any day look at this right. guy and then you're fired up for the week and then the starters could come out after a half and then you're getting that these other kids you know like the Alabamas they do this mm-hmm. so now those youngins are getting reps right. and playing through it and experience what a game day is at their right. sold out stadium. I just right. think a bye week is I'm with you hundred. It's not the NFL. Just play it through. Sure. It through. And now the flip side to that is, and I knew Holtz loved buys because he can kind of allow us to kind of go back and do fundamentals. Right. right. So that was his big thing was, and During the bye he's a week, coach. That, <laughs> he really, is. And, and, and who wouldn't be a good coach these days? If Matt Nagy oh, okay, is probably right. on the top of the list. <laughs> Very the well. The idea of, of literally going back and having somebody like Rocket Ishmael or Tim Brown mm-hmm. or these great players kind of go back and walk through their fundamentals, do their fundamentals again. I like that part of it. And it's mm-hmm. hard to kind of do that throughout the season, right? Because you're you're game planning for your next opponent, so you don't have that chance. So I can kind of see kind of that 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 pro and con for it, but I would kind of lean more toward what you and I were talking about, which was more kind of the idea of, hey, let's have a weaker opponent, but let's go through the process because that's all all this is, and it, it's so interesting. And so I mean, you've seen this thousands of thousands of times with, with your dad and yourself, but coaches are creatures of habit. Right. And so if there's a coach that I can't, so I'm sure let's say you use Nick Saban, but if you have a coach that has success at a bowl game, let's say they had a success at the orange bowl, right? So his buddies who were going there next year, they're going to say, Hey, what did you do that week? What did you do the night before? What did you, what did you have your play? What did your players eat? Right. And people may think that that's really kind of crazy, but that's what coaches do. They, they talk to each other. They find out exactly what it took for them to be successful against a certain opponent. And so when you think about what goes on during a bye week, or more importantly, you have a chance to say, hey, you know what? Maybe our bye week is going to be over, you know, maybe the Thanksgiving holiday or something like that, where maybe I can give my guys a couple of days off. Right. And it's a holiday versus that makes sense doing it during kind of like maybe in the beginning of the week or to the beginning of the season or kind of mid season because I want that routine to stay. I don't care if we're playing Alabama or we're playing, um, you know, Western Mississippi, right? I want that process of curfew, a certain time to eat, getting on the bus, meetings. I mean, everything. It's just, so that's kind of just, I mean, kind of how I feel about it. I agree. I'm 100% with you. Okay. That's the first time. Cincinnati Bearcats, though. 
Wow. You're excited about this team. Um, yeah, you know, it, it is and it, we, number we, seven. We talked about this before, right? And I kind of joke with people about this. In the beginning of the year, you know, everybody's like, well, hey, you know, it's exciting for Cincinnati to come to South Bend because it's going to be like their bowl game. But now it's like literally it's like Notre Dame's game bowl game, yeah. right? Because I mean, this right. is going to be one of their top ranked, the, the, the highest ranked opponent they're going to play. And oh, by they the can't way, lose this. they're paying them probably a million dollars plus to come to their, their field and possibly beat them, right? So, I mean, it's, it's going to be kind of interesting. It's not a situation with Michigan and Appalachian State a couple of years ago. My boy Rick is going to is cringe on that because <laughs> he is a huge Michigan fan and he hates when people bring that up. But the idea of having someone come in your house that you paid some money to because y'all don't want to go back to their stadium and have the beach is just going to be rough. So I think it's going to be interesting. I will get off my rant and we will see what goes on. So let me see. Does uh, Notre Dame get into the top 10 if they win whew. against Cincinnati? Um, you know what? It depends on the score for me. It depends if we if we can put up, and this is gonna be a lot, and this is, shouldn't be a lot, but if we can put up a couple hundred yards rushing, a couple hundred yards passing, I, I'm I'm happy because that mean hopefully that means that we'll we have a victory in hand. But I, I really think let, let let's come back to that question after the game because I'd like to see if <laughs> they put up the points that I think they should be. Beautiful, number six, Chris. Number six, Phil. Number six, Oklahoma. Now, these guys dropped two spots to number six because of their poor performance against West Virginia. They only beat them by three. Now, was West Virginia that bad? No, West Virginia wasn't that bad, but you have a highly ranked Oklahoma I mean, I, I had them as high as four, and they should have dominated West Virginia. I mean, I'm still a Spencer Rattler fan, but something needs to change here, and that's the reason why I dropped them because there's no way. Now, again, um, West Virginia's claim to fame is that they wound up beating a ranked Virginia Tech, which right. that, that was a really good game. But this one, I mean, I was – they won in the last couple of seconds. With a field, like, literally, it was counting down 2-1, and they wound up picking the ball, and they wound up winning. So that's when – but, again, again, this is my poll. If you don't play well, then you need to drop a little bit and allow other folks who are playing better – get ranked higher. I mean, I, I just right. think that's fair. I, I don't think you can say, hey, if you do poorly this week, or let's say you only win by three points to West Virginia, you should stay ranked in the top five or top six. I don't think that's fair to a lot of folks who are doing really well. You know, I mean, I, I haven't looked at other polls, but who knows? Uh, some people might have them higher than, than Penn State or uh, Iowa. But, yeah. you know. The it's crowd good. was chanting for uh, the backup quarterback. Yeah, the backup quarterback. I saw that. As well. I saw that. So there's some problems there, too. But, that's that's to your point, though. And they won't be challenged with their next opponent. However, I said that last week about West Virginia, right? They shouldn't be challenged, but they're going to be playing an, an, an okay Kansas State team. But what does that mean? I mean, are we, we're going to see another kind of single digit win. If right. we do, I'm going to drop them lower. I mean, that's just how I rank these teams, how, how, how I feel about them. So let's go on to number five. Number five, Penn State. Now, I, I'm, I'm getting, I, I'm, I don't know why, but I'm just pumped about Penn State this year. I think it's, I mean, I'm, I'm just really excited. I mean, I think Franklin's doing a great job. Um, I wish they would have put more points on the board. I mean, they wound up scoring 38, which is okay, but they played Villanova. I didn't know. I didn't even know Villanova had a football team. I just thought they were basketball school. But what? the idea, huh? You didn't know? 
Well, I knew that, but I'm just saying. I mean, like, okay. Vill- like Villanova. Yeah, they are more of a. Like that's like Georgetown having a football team. Yeah, and they they're Division Three. Team. Yeah. Right. Right. So you know, it's one of those situations where, but again, these schedules were made years and years in, in advance. So in a situation like that, then you have kind of luck of the draw happens to be playing in a couple weeks, Iowa, right? So you would want to play, let's say, Wisconsin before you play Iowa. So, so this, this, this kind of, this may work out for them. Um, that's really kind of the only takeaway I have, but I'm excited about the season. Um, they have some, some really strong opponents coming up. So the idea that, I hate looking ahead, but I can do that because I'm not playing anymore. But I, I, I hated doing it as a player because you're not supposed to. But I think that these couple of games will prepare them for a better team. Now, um, Penn State's going to be playing Indiana, which is okay. But again, I mean, ranked this high, you know, I'm expecting, you know, 40 points hopefully on on. Indiana, but we'll have a chance to see. So let's go to number four. Number four, Iowa. Now, this is a team I'm also excited about. It's really interesting. So I think I know you were kind of uh, amped about, about this uh, in the beginning of I the season. I love the Hawkeyes. And yeah. we wound up seeing um, that rivalry when, when they played Iowa State. And even though uh, it was at Iowa State, they wound up doing really well. And I think that this kind of – that was the momentum they needed. Um, and, again, playing kind of these weaker non-conferences, if you put them – if you schedule them the right way, then I think it's to your benefit. And right. they want to play in kind of just a so-so – Colorado State team, again, kind of only beating them by three, but that's the frustrating thing, right, is that it's hard to kind of keep these guys up, but again, other teams are doing it. So my, my only frustration is that when you put when – you, when you're only winning by three against a team that is okay, I mean, what's going to happen when you, when you get into the media schedule? Yeah, Iowa has had a tendency, especially at the quarterback position, to struggle. And that's their weakness. I'll tell you what, Chris, my favorite player in college football plays at Iowa, and he's their center. Oh, really? Oh, my God. This guy. I never knew that. I would do anything to have him become a Chicago Bear. I told Shane, the smartest man, early, I go, in September, I'm like, check out this off this center from Iowa. Really? And let me watch this kid play football. How'd you find him? Well, I saw him last year. Okay. And I was, I'm like, who the heck is this kid? And then, you know, as the season now, people, they're all talking about this guy's a freaking mauler. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he he is what Quentin Nelson was for Notre Dame at guard, a center. So, Yeah. So that's where it starts out. And they and they always, as Chubbs is saying, they always produce tight ends and offensive linemen mm-hmm. there. They're so fundamentally mm-hmm. well coached. Again, they just can't recruit the right quarterback there. And a buddy of mine's a coach over there too. And I just checked the he just got hired this year. He was a former Iowa player there. Okay. But, oh, okay. But he uh he told me, dude, you were 100% right about the center. And I'm like, yeah, this kid is the real deal. So watch him, guys, that are interested in the draft. He's a tremendous football player. But to your point, Iowa, I was hoping Colorado State, they would handle them. But Iowa always has a tendency to lose that one game that costs them. It's every year. It's consistently that one loss. So is it going to be Penn State that's going to be that? Are they going to get over that hump? You know, they're always like 10 and 1. 10 and 1. It's mm. like Ferenz, he needs to 
he has to pull it through. I mean, as good of a coach as he is, in my opinion, there's got to be that point with which you are undefeated. Sure. And you've got that swagger about you. And, you know, they just haven't done it. They just haven't done it. So I get, I like where you place them. Um, I think Penn State has the better quarterback right now. Yeah, this, yeah. I mean, he's, uh, he's throwing up some. Yeah. He, so, he had 400. Uh, that's uh, Sean Clifford. Clifford. He had like over 400 yeah. Large, uh, yeah. yards last game. So, that, I mean, that, yeah. I mean, he's throwing up. But he's and, playing against Villanova. I mean, I played against Villanova. So. <laughs> but, but you, and, and hopefully you did well. Actually. I, I didn't. I didn't even play that game. But anyway. Oh. <laughs> I'm just keeping it a hundred. So okay, well, all right. but listen, I'm just saying that's the East Conference that we played. I can't even remember. They Hofstra canceled football. It's when? What year? Oh my god, two thousand and something. They just canceled the football program. It was uh, it was this uh, big political thing. They put all this money into the stadium. I mean, if you look at a lot of the. Hofstra alum, I mean, a lot of NFL players come out of Hofstra. And mm. They shut down the pro. It was huge, huge uh, controversy in regards to oh, the I school bet. and the former players still fighting to try to rejuvenate the program. Oh, sure. I'm sure. Sad. It's sad, but it is what it is. But Iowa, right. Iowa, I O W A. I always there remember you go. that. And, and- their opponent next week is going to be Maryland, so that they can obviously dominate Maryland. Yes. But again, I'm hoping it's going to be more than three points because if they, you know, I mean, again, you're still talking yeah. about the Big Ten. Yeah. And even though Maryland's not having that great of a year, they, they should be better than the Colorado State. Right. So, Iowa, right. number Let's four. Let's go to number three. Number three, Oregon. Now I am so excited about Oregon. Um, not only because selfishly, I, I I actually know the coach. I actually played against Mario Cristobal when he played for Miami, and I played for for Notre Dame. Um, I like this team because everybody had them out. They 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 were not going to do well against Ohio State. I know it's a couple weeks ago, but they just really put themselves on a map and literally elevated themselves into the the top five category just from that game. And they deserve it. They had two great defensive players out of the game. They wound up doing well. And I love their quarterback, uh, Anthony Brown, who actually came from Boston College, held a couple records there and wound up kind of going to Oregon. And again, not a lot of flash, not a lot of exposure, and really is a consistent player. Um, they want to beating just an 0-3 Arizona team. Again, conference game, really no competition. But again, I mean, they're putting their their starters only playing maybe three quarters in that situation. And now they have a chance to kind of let other guys go in there and get that experience. Um, the thing I am excited about is that we had a chance to kind of see uh, Brown do well. Uh, he had maybe about 200, 200 something yards, throw three touchdowns. That was good. Um, is it going to be enough uh, later on down the line? But I, I think if you had a chance to see a pass show, we actually talked about um, how they're going to do really well. And as long as they don't have any hiccups, they're going to stay in that top five, top four position. Um, and, and really kind of make this season one of those situations where they're, they're going to have a chance to really be in the hunt for the national championship, along with the, the past folks we, we've seen in the past. But I think it's going to be a really good year for them. They, they really don't have any other challenges. Their biggest opponent, obviously, is Ohio State. Um, the Pac-12 isn't that strong this year. Phil, do you have any comments about how, how do you think the, the Pac-12 looks this year outside I of think, Oregon? Well, I think USC turning to Dart is going to help the, that young. Mm-hmm. And I guess they got rid of a coach that I guess 
you know, just from what I've heard was challenging in regards to what it is they wanted to do. Right. And, you know, and when it starts going into politics and what is it alumni and who's, you know, giving money and play this kid, all that kind of stuff. You can't get involved with that crap. You got to play the best players and make everything about winning football. So again, the PAC 12 Oregon is the standalone now uh, UCLA getting chip Kelly, mm -hmm. you know, getting knocked out there. They, they look like they were, you know, turning a corner. Yeah. But, I am right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They look really strong and then you lose these games and that's what is great about college football you know it's like you lose one i mean if you lose two in the zorich poll you get to stay at 14. <laughs> whoa, whoa wow wow okay all right okay all but right. you know what i'm saying here oregon it looks to be the standout yeah. in that conference which is I thought maybe Arizona State with Herm out there mm -hmm. might make some noise, but they took an, a disappointing loss themselves. So that's where they are. Oregon is the top shelf, and they have the talent surrounding them, like we talked about with Cincinnati, that explosive talent. Right. And then right. when you add what Zorich is saying here about those returning starters – to beat Ohio State without two of their leaders that are very, you know, potential NFL draft picks, you get them back, and I just think you're just cooking with gas at that point. So yeah. I like the pick here. Or All right. All right. Now we're at number two. Number two, Georgia. Actually, forgot for those folks who are kind of keeping tabs on this. Um, Oregon's next opponent is going to be Stanford, who I had them ranked because they wound up taking down SC in a great, great game. Uh, the mouse was like 41 to 21 or something like that. Um, that wound up getting Clay Hilton fired. But um, I think that Oregon is, is just going to kind of run all over them. So. Georgia, right? So we were talking about before about JT Daniels. Um, this was a 62-0 win over Vanderbilt. Um, absolutely, Chubbs. I mean, this is their defense is so lethal. Um, I think uh, Phil, you and I were talking about that the defensive tackle. Before. Oh my god, <laughs> a beast! Just, he a beast. is. He is a beast of size. We call that the human condition. There's only like 1% of people on the planet, and you played with one in Alonzo Spellman that walk around as a freakish size, athleticism, and strength and power to play at the. When you see those types of people, you know, Calais Campbell, somebody like that, when I, when I saw him coming out of Miami, I'm like, oh, my God, this guy's 6'8", moves like he's 6'3", and, and it has that kind of strength. That is – I mean, this guy's one of the best I've seen in the last 12 years mm. at that position. Mm. And, to, and you know what he has? A motor. Yeah. You don't yeah. see big guys like that <laughs> have that motor of right. chase. I'm telling you, I mean, he's he he's playing football for his family. I I just know guys like that that just love the game, but no, I'm getting myself to the league and mm -hmm. I'm gonna take care of my family. Mm -hmm. That guy, whew, I would do anything for that kid. He he is going to be a filthy animal. Uh Georgia's defense led by him. I mean, they they're good as it is, Chris. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They got speed flying everywhere. So they definitely are going to give Alabama or anybody all they can handle. All well, and handle. it's it's unfortunately we won't see that till later in the year. Because I know. They're, they're, they're in two separate divisions. But the idea of them kind of running through. But, I mean, you know, the, this, this Arkansas team that's going to play Saturday um, – do I think they have a chance? Um, I mean, I want Arkansas to do well because mm -hmm. I think it's going to help their program, right? 
mean, this is the first time they went 4-0, I want to say since like the early 2000s or something like that. So, you know, the, the fact that Arkansas has a chance to kind of ride his bandwagon for a while, I just hope they don't get totally destroyed. Right. Because it'll, it'll, it'll kind of, it, it, it has a possibility of affecting them. But, I mean, if they could pull something like Florida do with Alabama, I mean, you know, and still have Georgia win, but kind of a, allow them to kind of show up and, and do well, I think it's going to be really, really respectable. But, again, and, and I, I, this is the last time I'm going to say it, but it's about getting your non-starters experience. 62 nothing. People may look at that and say, oh, it's terrible. Why would you do that? Look, I mean, you, you can't not stop a player. You cannot stop a coach from doing what, what they know. They know how to score. They want to score points. They want to play defense. This is what's right. going to happen. So the best way to utilize a lopsided score like this is to have guys go in there who are not your, your regular starters and do well. So uh, I think it's going to be an exciting, exciting game um, on Saturday, Georgia against Arkansas. Can you see them taking over the number one spot? Over from Bama in your poll, Bullets wants to know. Uh, Bullets, that's going to be interesting because I have Arkansas ranked 10. Mm -hmm. And if they demolish Arkansas, that's a definite consideration. There you go. But Alabama is going to be playing a – uh, 4-0 Ole Miss with Lane Kiffin. And although I don't have them ranked, they're they're a pretty good team. So I think if Alabama has a good showing and demolishes Ole Miss, then it's going to be challenging. So, so it's going to be I'm based on the... Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see. I have faith in Arkansas. I think that's going to be a closer game than people think. Really? So, okay. Well, yeah. Uh, hopefully, I, I just want I, I love like that be... coach and yeah, I, I love what I love what you said. Real quick, I'll say this real quick. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot to be said and I think a lot of fans are starting to learn now through social media and everything that we have. Well, I hope the importance of a head coach sets the difference in all of these programs because if you are t- you in talking about Lou Holtz using that bye week to go back go back to the fundamentals I'm sure young Chris Zorich and young Michael Stonebreaker and everyone else on that football team are all like Jesus Christ hated it Hated it. stepping with the right foot again hated or delivering exactly. on the path You're uh, like, I know all this uh, stuff yeah but the next week you're so excited that you're actually playing an opponent and you're like, damn, these fundamentals actually do work. And I, I like that. I think that that resonates with the Arkansas team. I, I've been so impressed with them, mm-hmm. really impressed with them. So, mm-hmm. well, and, and then also kind of on the lines you're talking about, when you have a chance to kind of bring in those fundamentals throughout the season, then it's more reaction for you because the mm. last time you practice them, you practice their fundamentals were training camp. Exactly. Exactly. And so now, you know, midway through all of a sudden now, like, you know, you talk about the next one, the next opponent we had, I mean, we were so fundamentally sound when we played it, whoever it was that it was probably one of our better games. So the idea of being able to use that to the best of your ability, I think, is important and not to not to kind of squander that that free time with players. Love it, Chris. You're always bringing a level of experience and understanding to the table when it comes to breaking down all of these teams, but also college football in itself. Because three time All American, former Notre Dame Golden Domer, Walter Camp All American, Hall. College football hall of famer. Oh, you got a lot of titles, man. You got, got more, a lot of titles, bro. You got more title belts than uh Mike Tyson. That I do not have, but that's okay. <laughs> I like the way that sounds. Absolutely. All like right, the way that number All one, right. coach. Number Are you ready? one on the Super no. 16 poll show. Number one, Alabama. 
Bryce Young is the name that I forgot. I knew I had his first name right. But I mean, <laughs> folks might not remember, but uh, I talked about Bryce before. I talked about uh, Alabama before. Don't, don't want to sound like a broken record. But when you achieve that certain level of success, then that's the example that folks should follow to be successful. Not saying that's the only reason, the only way you can be successful, but he's found uh, a way. Now, Southern Mississippi in the beginning of the year, lesser opponents. I mean, they destroyed them 63-14. Um, Bryce threw up through 300 yards. Um, actually, him and the quarterback from Penn State, uh, Clifford, were the first two quarterbacks to reach 1,000 yards in the top 16 polls. So I just kind of thought that was kind of interesting because when you look at kind of how they've been successful – then they obviously have a balanced running game so they can kind of do that, which makes me kind of nervous with my team, but I won't talk about that right now. The thing I think that's going to be interesting, though, is when you talk about the success that um, Nick Simmons had, I mean, he's doing it because he puts the responsibility on his assistant coaches as well. And I think that's important. And you've seen when the, the team has success, his assistant coaches has have success as well. Um, that's why they have so much um, turnover with their coaches. And when you look at the coaches that have been kind of from his coaching tree, uh, you know, you, 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 you're amazed. You, you even look at the the team who's at number two with Kirby Smart. I mean, he used to be say his defensive coordinator, and now they have a chance to play each other every year. So you know, it's it's interesting how that kind of works out, but. Um, when you talk about kind of Alabama, really don't have a lot to talk about with a 63-14 um, uh, score. Uh, Phil, do you have anything you want to fill in? Because, I mean, this is just Alabama at, at what, what they do. So Yeah, they've – you know, I'm wearing Star Wars. They become the evil empire. It's just I – mean, that's what winning does. Like the Patriots became that. The New York Yankees were that. And they've established themselves in a manner where – you know, we're talking about fundamentals. Obviously, Nick Saban, coaching fundamentals, accountability, just continuously doing. It's at some point, you know, people have to say, okay, Tom Brady is the greatest of all time. It's like, at what point, you know, you're never going to please Tom, Dick, and Harry, it just seems. Sure. But Tom yeah. Brady, I mean, at some point, even the most uh, adamant, hater has to admit at 44 years old what this guy's done is pretty goddamn impressive same thing with nick saban what he's done with that program alabama is just unreal and it just the proof is in the pudding and he just continue he does it right and he does it and he does it again and again and it's like everybody's super bowl when I was a kid growing up, you guys, Notre Dame, was everybody's Super Bowl. Now Alabama holds that title, and you got them where they are. Until they get knocked off, you know, that's where they – they don't have a letdown, you know? Right, which, which I think is good, which, which I think is amazing because even with Florida, they had a chance to go out there and really prove themselves – the following week, and they did. I mean, they went out and, and destroyed, you know, Southern Mississippi. But I was going to make a comment as you were talking about um, Nick Saban. Yeah. He he even has time to do commercials with Dion. So, <laughs> I mean, you know his stuff is, is organized and tight. So, Oh, yeah. He's organized. Speaking of organized, this is Chris Zorich's Super 16 poll show the National Football Foundation, the College Football Hall of Fame, and the Football Writers Association of America. Week four. There All it right. is. Here we go, baby. Let's talk about this. We got NC State. Who's new? New. Unranked before at 16. We got Michigan State at 15 with Clemson. They're dropping. Okay, there's going to be some folks that talk about their, 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 the only two-loss team in the top 16. Let's see what happens next week. We've got BYU at 13, Texas A&M, my Irish at 11, 
couple people might be upset with that, but I, I'm just worried about the offense right now. An exciting Arkansas at 10, Florida 9, Ohio State, Cincinnati he has the bye week before Notre Dame. You got Oklahoma coming off a three point win literally at the last second in overtime against West Virginia. Not too happy about that. You got Penn State at five, Iowa four, Oregon three, Georgia, who has that interesting matchup with Arkansas at 10, and at number one, Alabama. Alabama. I wish you I could like, uh, Keith. I was trying to do yes. Keith, Keith Jackson. Jackson. Keith Jackson. Keith Jackson. No, you I were see. trying to do Keith Jackson doing <laughs> an announcer. I was trying to do Will Ferrell doing Keith Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he has done that. If sometime. only you could see Chris' laughter. It's wow. worth every moment in this show. Wow. Speaking of moments. This is kind of fun. I mean, I, I think and this is, we, 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 we got to be transparent with this. Yes. Uh, this big five, this was your idea. Yes. So I think props to DDP for putting a segment on a show that's really enjoyable. Because, I mean, I like because when we talk about the teams that we, or the games that we, 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 uh, we mentioned, yeah. Those were like the biggest games of the previous week. Right. They all so, happen to come through. To yes, fruition. yes. And the first one we talked about many times, number 10, Arkansas, and number two, Georgia. I think it's going to be a great matchup. I'm also going to throw in the Cincinnati-Notre Dame game. Uh, Cincinnati's 11, or excuse me, Cincinnati's 7, and Notre Dame's 11. I think that's going to be, for me, that, that's really going to see how we – uh, Notre Dame does this year. Uh, oh. We get the Ole Miss Alabama game. And it's going to be a game. shocker. This, this Will the be Mannings shocker. be there? No, oh, yeah. There, there you go. I like that one. <laughs> How many Manning uh, shots will we get? Wow. This is going to be a good one. Not on my radar. A lot of folks were talking about that. Michigan versus Wisconsin. Oh, oh, look Even at Even though Wisconsin Charisse. came out with a lot, see? Charisse see? is smiling. That was for you now. That was for you. <laughs> yeah. Which Go means blue. we're going to have to see how well Michigan's going to do against coming off of a loss. Um, uh, uh, this this loss from Wisconsin. So it's yeah, be, Michigan had a tough, tough week too. So let's see how they do here against Wisconsin, who Notre Dame beat. In Notre the last Dame couple, beat. yeah, last. last I like think how last this quarter. all comes together. It's college football, man. This that's is, how this it is works, the season, man. bro. It's crazy. It it's is insane. Crazy. Which is why I love college football so much because you have your number two, number three, number fifth, twelfth ranked team having yeah. a shot at taking down a number one. Now it may be rare, but it, they have an opportunity to do that, which I think is exciting. That and the fanfare, the excitement, the 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 going on. To the campus, the uh, the pageantry. I've never been to Love. Notre Dame. Uh oh. As we long as I that. I know you. I gotta go with Chris Zorich though, because I want to chase something like that. I want nope. the red carpet treatment. I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's hanging out in a parking lot with a red solo cup is the treatment that I get. What? That's it's what I'm mean. It's on a script. <laughs> I'm never gonna live that. Day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's not on the script. Wow. So we talked about Michigan yes. and Wisconsin. My last one, again, yes. another shocker, not a big, huge one, but I think it's going to be interesting, is Oklahoma and Kansas State. I want I want Oklahoma to show me something. Yes. Show me if they can beat a team that they're supposed to beat by a lot of points. Yeah. Because I'm Oklahoma getting, State beat I'm, Kansas State. Yes, yes. And I'm, I'm getting a little nervous because – Oklahoma might be dropping out if they don't do well. So, Ooh. but Clemson, Clemson stays in. Here we go. <laughs> because they saying. were ranked high, they're not going to get included. But wasn't they Oklahoma deserve. four? Wasn't they? Weren't they at four under the Zorich poll? Yes, but so. they were four because 
they played well. They played. They beat somebody that they 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 were supposed to. Okay. The reason why they they, they let me fell pull up the Oklahoma schedule. The I reason why they fell is because of Tulsa. Oklahoma, Remember that whole Oklahoma football. Let's, right. Let me see their schedule. They beat. They almost lost to Tulane. Oh, then, Tulane. I'm sorry, Tulane. 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 Right. Yes, opening day. So uh, that's why. Bears that's why receiver they Darnell to, Mooney and Matt Forte. They started to drop. Mm-hmm. And then who was their next Western, one? Western WCU. What is this? Western team? Carolina, I think. Western Carolina Catamounts. Like we, yeah, 76 to nothing. There you go. 76 to nothing. Then 23-16 okay. versus Nebraska. See? Then what you talked about this past weekend, 16-13. So to Zorich's point. I have no loss. They don't have a loss, but they have some squeakers Absolutely and squeakers. some disappointing showcases of football. You're also Absolutely. having a fan base chanting for the backup quarterback. That's <laughs> not a good sign. Not a good this, sign. This kid, Especially Rattler, when, when Rattler was supposed to be a Heisman Trophy candidate. Exactly. And Chris, who is a three-time All-American, when you let those things and you become arrogant, I think sometimes that takes away and it rubs people the wrong way, especially if you're not performing up to snuff. Sure, absolutely. Sure, sure. So, I, w- I would agree with that. You like how I, I dropped that and the graphic at the same time. That's, that's impressive. That's how you do it here that's impressive. on TTNL. This guy, Chris Zorich, every week he brings the energy, the passion for the game of football. He brings what Mr. T, predictions and pain, as he would say, as Clubber Lang and Rocky. I got to tighten that drop up. I don't want to drop okay, I was going to say, well, no, I'm going to see it. I was do it. it. That was I, a teaser, man. I, I thought gotta, we see it. It's got to be a little tighter. There's too much of a pause in it. Okay. I'm going to fix it. So, All right. But this week, before we go into Chris's final thoughts, I got to say, this past weekend on TTNL, Bears Hour Live was live you had a bunch of people fired up with the chicago bears who by the way former bear right here chris zorich played for and was tremendous with the chicago bears uh were you ever on all madden team i remember i, I thought it's you funny were. that you mentioned that i was on the 10th anniversary of the all madden team yes exactly i remember i had the deck of cards all Madden cars, and you were in it. I'm gonna find that deck. That was so cool, man. Being because the idea of being kind of that blue collar, kind of hard nosed, kind of the underdog player, right? And that team epitomized that exactly. And so having a chance to be in, and I have an award around here. I'll, I'll bring it out for the next show, but it's a, it's a really cool, cool award. Ooh. But the idea. That you have a chance to kind of go out there and, and be that the, the guy whose shirt is untucked and blood yes. spurting out and you know things like I mean that's what John Madden was all about so that, that's cool. Bob Fish, now good job, great good night. One thank you, Bob. Hundred, I agree with him. I, like I appreciate it. it. Um, but yeah, all Can I Madden. Have one more thought before you. I was going to get me out of here. No, I'm, I'm, you're going to get your final, final thought. thought. This is not my oh, final thought. I want yes. to comment on Go your ahead. shirt because have you started watching Visions? I have not. On Disney Plus? Bro, you is got it to good? watch. Yes. Very, they're, they're little, maybe 12, 15 minute snippets of animation versions of Star Wars. Great oh, direction. Yeah. One of the first, sh- one of the first episodes. It's the traditional story of the Ronin samurai coming into the village. Really? And the 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 the, the mafia, the, the group that's taken away, you know, all the supply. It's awesome. Oh man. Awesome. I'm, this and, I, I, I love that kind of samurai genre as well. My wife, you know, she's my my sidekick here and my my muse, if you will. She always comments and i was like i'm gonna add a segment to the show where i'm gonna ask chris give me one show that fans should watch 
Ooh. and 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 keep that near the end before your thoughts. And look okay. at you, you did it just there. Because I I would tell people, I was gonna share this uh, the Squid Game on Netflix. Got to check that out. Okay. Oh my God, it's from it's it's overdubbed, so some people are like standoffish or they put okay. their nose up because it's from a north or korea okay and it is a crazy crazy story that's really? all okay. i can tell you so it's really entertaining um check that out squid game the squid game i'm gonna okay. me and chris every week we're gonna give you one show uh, like something you gotta tune in first. to at the end of the show speaking of shows real quick Tomorrow night, we will have Keeping It 100. It's on the script. It's on the script. <laughs> yes, it's on the script. I was I was writing the script, for God's sake. No, I'm just joking. We will be live tomorrow talking about the Chicago Bears with fo uh, fo a friend of the network, Adam, um, excuse me, Matt Waldman. Matt Waldman will be jumping on the show with us on Keeping It 100. 32 is the identity of your football team. This has been a mystery for this clown, this shoe salesman, for years. It's going to keep them honest. You brought in all of this speed, and you didn't test it one time. Not yeah. one. And that, I agree with that one. That makes what David Montgomery did even more exactly. impressive. Exactly. Shy City TTNL, we need people in the stands. Fuck Craig. We need actual people that know what they're talking about and talk about the Bears. Chicago's trading up. Yes! yes. What? Oh Here it is! Just reported. Oh, Smoke weed every day. What's going on? But... <laughs> a lot of oh. pussy cats. A lot of pussy cats out there. Blame, blame it on the bubble wrap. You know what I mean? Like I feel like this. Right. The starters were unprepared because of con lack of contact in the preseason. It's That's cute. awesome. I love it. You, you even got yeah. pops in there. With, with, yeah. with, 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 he wanted right. to rock the gold chain. I Represent. Was, we're going to give you a chain to wear. Maybe you'll actually shoot a film. <laughs> wow. I'm just That's a whole different story. <laughs> I love Chris Zorich. I love when he comes on keeping it 100. We got to get you on a Bears Hour Live one weekend after the Bears play when you are watching the bears so you can give your thoughts with me and that would be fun that'll be a lot of fun you you could have like a point counterpoint yeah exactly How about i that? i love that idea too and i just want to one last thing guys chris zorich puts his heart and soul into doing this each and every week just a great human being and a great person and a friend now i i'm just so happy to have you a part of this network and make sure that you go over, subscribe to his podcast on iTunes. Give him five stars, whatever stars. How many the top stars? Is it four or five? I didn't even know what night it is. It's Monday night, so Wednesday night is keeping it 100. But go over there, iTunes, smash the like button, subscribe to his YouTube page as well, and show him the love, 100 Crew. All of you, and then start following him on Twitter and tagging him. It it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Kathleen, thank you so much for tuning in. That's awesome. Yes, yeah. Kathleen Zofki. Is that yes. saying well, we it actually, right? Yes, you're perfect. We actually go way back, like really 20 years. Yeah, yeah. She's a huge, huge fan. That's awesome. So next week thank we'll you. have more shows for you and everything with Chris Zorch. It's gonna be a great weekend of college football. 
but we do not end like that. We end with Zorich's final thoughts. All right, this is going to be fun. So this is not your, your typical final thought, but because history was made this weekend, wanted to talk about Brian Kelly breaking New Rackney's record. Um, and he's actually said it himself that the the pressure, the folks that are named, all they care about are championships. Um, I think being able to win 106 games during your tenure at Notre Dame is amazing. I mean, you're talking about the, the the father of Notre Dame football as with in Newt Rockney. Um, having a chance to surpass a number like that is amazing. Um, and uh, I think Brian deserves a lot, a lot of credit. Um, one of the mottos that they, they have now are graduated champions. So being able to graduate champions, have a chance to be successful on the football field as well. The only hump he has to get over is now winning those championships. And, and, and he's talked about that. So this is, this is nothing new. But um, I just I, I felt as though I had to mention that because although I'm extremely hard on Notre Dame, um, I, I'm very proud that I came from there. But more importantly, um, they the type of success they have, the type of, of um, success that Brian has had is great. And we've noticed that they're, they're graduating their players, which is the most important thing. Because at the end of the day, football is only a couple of years of your life. Now you have a chance to walk around with a degree that's respected all over the world. So but those are my final thoughts. Um, not going to be too much of a homer, but the idea of one coach having a chance to surpass Rockney is great. Now I was with Coach Holtz, and, and he wasn't able to do it. So much respect to Brian Kelly for having a chance to kind of do that. Really well said. I think, like we said at the top, when we were talking about saving – and the coach at Arkansas, you know, a coach on it, especially in football, more so than any other sport, they're so important to be a teacher, to be a role model, to un, to lead the way of what your expectation is for the game. But how many lessons did we learn as football players about being a father and life in itself, a husband? a role model, and listen, not everybody, just like in school, not everybody pays attention in class, but for about 70 to 80% of us that have played this game and had great coaching, I owe my father and all the coaches that I had in my life everything. I wouldn't even be who I am today as a husband and father if it wasn't for them. So to your credit, given Coach Kelly – that kind of tip of the hat is so well deserved so well deserved especially well, at a program that prides itself on this game as well as the academics and that i can't say enough about that and that's the, I mean, he's one example obviously but you kind of got me thinking when you talked about you know kind of other coaches i mean my high school coach john pataki um i mean we didn't have a lot of success in high school, but the discipline that he instilled in us, um, we had to respond yes or no, sir. Um, there were certain things that we had to do. I mean, he would go to our, our, our teachers and demand that we we're doing well. We had to sit up in front of the class. So, I mean, coaches in general, um, kind of as, as you were saying, have taught us so much about life. And we didn't have a lot of success in high school, but the lessons I've learned, I was able to learn, made me succeed at Notre Dame, made me become a three-time All-American, made me become a member of the College Football Hall of Fame. Although, as a team collectively, we, we didn't do that well in high school, but exactly. the lessons I learned made, made me a, a success. So, grateful for coaches. Well, you're a great person and a great father. You're also a great host here. Oh, Super 16 Super Poll 16 show. show. Every Monday night here at 8.30 on Chris Zorch's Facebook, Twitter. His That's YouTube a new, by the channel. way. 
That's, These that's, are that's all new, new. By the way. I was kind yes. of nervous about it, but I love the fact that we're going there. This is your your energy, your show, TTNL, and you have formed a brotherhood, and we can't be more excited about having you here. That being said, this week, one other promo I got to do for TTNL. We have a special song release. There will be a world premiere song, 8 o'clock Wednesday. It'll be nice. premiering before Keeping It 100, the, the Curls, Curls, Curls song, a Matt Nagy tribute song. So you're going to want to tune in. Put the bell on your YouTube channel, the TTNL. Cool Kennedy and myself in the production studio releasing that music video. Oh we have Lord. more videos on our network than MTV. <laughs> 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 so there you go. I great job tonight, Chris. I'm looking forward to the weekend. Thank you, Phil. You broke it all down. You're an amazing person. Tell your wife I said hello. Likewise. Thank you, Cherie. Yes, producing in the background for and us. And I even got your Michigan in there. We even talked about Michigan this week. You did. You did. And there was a lot of fans. And Bullets, thank you for that nice comment. We make Mondays more bearable. Hello. Man, do you like how he bearable? I like that. Love it. Love it. All right, folks. We'll see you next week here on the Super 16 Poe Show. There you go with Chris Zorich. Thanks for watching the Super 16 Poll Show with Chris Zorich. Like, subscribe, and comment. This has been a special presentation of the Tape Never Lies Network. Performance over politics.